Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support, subscribe. Alice Tankerville, A Tragic Story of Love, Theft and Brutal Death. Alice Tankerville was a woman known for her loose morals and was common law wife to John Wolfe, a man well known for his criminal dealings in London in the early 1500s and who was a dock worker with a so-called dubious past. In 1531, John and Alice hatched a plan to commit both murder and robbery. It is believed that Alice made acquaintance with two foreign merchants and managed to persuade them to take a boat trip with her on the Thames. They rowed the boat to a place known as the Turning Tree, but instead of finding what they thought would be something wonderful, they found John Wolfe waiting for them. There he killed them both in cold blood. Alice and John tied the bodies together and put the two merchants into the water. Alice and John then rowed the boat back to the shore and stole 366 gold crowns, a small fortune at the time and worth around £1 million today from the merchant's room on the ship. Maybe what John and Alice didn't know is that the gold was sent from Europe to help replenish the depleting royal treasury for Henry VIII. The gold was stored in a huge chest and chained with heavy iron chains to the floor of the ship, but to the guard's surprise it had vanished. A huge investigation was set in motion, and all the evidence, including the fact that the two bodies of the merchants resurfaced, pointed towards John Wolfe. Although there was not a lot of evidence to actually point the finger at John, he had been a member of the crew when the ship placed anchor at the docks of London. John was arrested and caught with a large sum of money that was believed to have been stolen from the royal coffers, and this is what ultimately led to his imprisonment. You could not steal from the king, especially someone as brutal as King Henry VIII, and get away with it. It is important at this point to explain that John Board and William Dennis were guards in the Tower of London, and during his imprisonment, both Alice and John would get to know them very well. Alice would visit her husband almost daily for this time at the Tower, and over time John Wolfe began to see that John Board became a little too fond of Alice, and that is the weak spot they used to make John Wolfe's time in the Tower a little bit more bearable. Alice was also allowed to bring in good food and wine for her husband, something that he would have definitely not have received otherwise. Alice and John Wolfe managed to persuade John Board to smuggle items in that made his stay better than those who were imprisoned around him, and after six months of imprisonment, John was set free. The case surrounding him collapsed as there was a lack of evidence to support the claims. John Wolfe then, upon receiving a promise that John Board would take care of Alice, left the country and went to Ireland. Whilst John was away, new evidence would arise that linked him to the king's missing gold, and this new evidence also implicated his wife Alice. Even though Wolfe had been gone, both he and Alice were tried in their absence to avoid losing any time. Alice wasn't made aware of what was going on around her, and she still at this time was regularly seen around the tower, as she had become very friendly with John Board. Within days, both Alice and Wolfe were tried and sentenced to death for treason, something that Alice, up until this point, knew nothing about. In February of 1534, Alice was arrested and placed into a cell with no windows, inside the Cold Harbour Tower, and the only light that came through would have been through the tiny barred window on the heavy oak cell door. She was shackled and chained to the walls, forced to wait for her husband to be arrested. Because Alice's treatment was incredibly harsh, the lieutenant of the tower agreed that the chains could be removed as long as the cell door and outer door were kept locked at all times. William Dennis, an old friend of Alice, was then tasked with guarding her cell, and he was upset by what he saw. Dennis then began to bring in small treats and gifts for Alice, but this and his upset filtered back to the tower's lieutenant, and Dennis was then fired from his position. Alice was now alone and scared. The tower was a frightening place, especially for a woman, and the only escape from the terrors that filled the halls with the echoes of fellow prisoners' tortured screams were the visit that Alice received from John. His schedule had been changed, so that he now guarded her cell on a daily basis. Over time, the bond the two shared developed into love, 
and they began to start making plans of their life together through the conversations they had through the cell door. Alice had heard of a possible escape route through the Cold Harbour Gate, and John, who by this time was besotted with Alice, agreed to help. John got more daring with his visits, and he is reported to have, on separate occasions, smuggled a wooden stick, oiled the cell doors, and then a copy of the key to the lock of the Cold Harbour Gate. He also smuggled in a rope to Alice. All these items were then hidden out of sight by Alice, as they awaited the night of the escape. The escape plans were then finalised and two weeks later at 10pm Alice, by the light of the moon, used the wooden stick to carefully and quietly knock the pins that held the gate shut and then she unlocked the door. Praying that John's oiling of the hinges worked, she slowly opened the door. She then ran through the maze-like hallways of the tower and avoided all the guards, passing prisoners who called out for her to free them. And then finally, she got to some stairs leading to a flat roof above Traitor's Gate. John was waiting for Alice, on the roof of St Thomas's Tower. John tied the rope to an iron hook, and after waiting for the guards to complete their rounds on the street opposite the moat, they then lowered themselves down onto a small wharf by Traitor's Gate, and untied a boat that would normally be used to ferry in prisoners. They used the boat to cross the moat, and there they walked up the grass verge towards the homes of the guards of the tower and their families. John had hired a couple of horses, and the plan was to go to his friend's house to hide for a couple of days. They would then leave London and head to Europe. But just as they were nearing the edge of the walk, tower guards walked towards them and John, praying they didn't recognise Alice, huddled her in close and she dropped her head in a bid not to be seen but one of the guards recognised both Alice and John and took both her and John back to the tower. There Alice was thrown in a cell. As the cell door bolted shut, she wept pitiful tears, for the dreams of marrying a well-respected and loyal warder of the Tower of London and a faithful servant to His Majesty the King were now over. John could be heard screaming in agony, for he had been placed in little ease, a cell that was neither big enough to stand up in or lay down in, and the prisoners were there forced to kneel in the cramped position, often for days at a time. Word then reached the guards that Alice's common-law husband had been arrested and was en route to the tower. They found it somewhat fitting that Alice and John Wolfe should then both share the same fate. Both Alice and John Wolfe were led down to the bottom of the tower at low tide, shackled to the wall and jeered at as they tried to climb the slippery banks to avoid the incoming tide. But it was no use. They both drowned as the tide got higher and higher on the 31st of March 1534. The tide would have been slow and the realisation would have crept over them for hours as they helplessly waited for their fate as the water slowly began to climb and they could no longer hold their heads up any longer. But what happened to John Board? Initially, he was questioned, but he, without torture, confessed everything, saying that he was driven to betray his king and his job by the love that he felt for Alice. He was then tortured as part of his punishment and left to suffer in ways that no prisoner had ever suffered. There is a place within the tower which has been named as Little Ease, but it is debatable in the opinion of some historians if it is really where John Board was imprisoned. It is rather believed that John Board may have well been tortured by being forced into something called the Scavenger's Daughter, or Skeffington's Daughter, after the man who created it, but that was rarely used. But in John Board's case, anything is possible, for he was subjected to some horrible indignities before he was allowed to die. He was also racked for his part in the escape, and he would have felt severe pain as his muscles ripped and his arms and legs were pulled from their sockets, John was left a broken man. He finally died from exposure when he was hung naked by his arms from the walls of the tower. He was left there to rot as an example of what happens to those who turn traitor to the tower. John's body was left on the side of the tower for months, being picked at by the crows. He served as a reminder to anyone foolish enough to cross the king what would happen if you tried to escape the king's justice. After everything that happened, the recovery of the gold crowns was never recorded. 
Was this an elaborate cover-up, blaming two people of another's crime? Or did they deserve the fate they faced? Was it a massive miscarriage of justice that led to the extremely gruesome and horrific end to the three individuals whose lives were intertwined? Alice Tankerville is the only woman to escape from the tower. Even if her freedom was all too brief, she and John Board had even for a moment a taste of a new life, but a life that they had ripped away from them in a brutally horrid manner. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.